Um, this is strange because I don't quite know if this is working or not, um, but it is. Okie doke. So uh, that's, well, that's us. Um, I'm over there, and this is Martin here. Um, we're going to cover off uh, just a few things today. So first bit is we're going to do some scene setting um, and talk about why advertisers need to look at new ways. Then we're going to talk about the challenges and complexities, and then we're going to talk more about the attention side of things. So over to Martin. Thanks, Simon. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, so first of all, I just wanted to touch on the landscape that advertisers face at the minute. Uh, thank you, Simon. So if we look back over the last couple of years, pretty much every sector will claim that they've been drastically affected by COVID, and those changes are still being felt today. It's a bloody difficult time to be an advertiser, and if, if we, you know, we're not alone in having to deal with those trends. We've seen unprecedented uh, variation in the values and the levels that we see for different media, but also the speed of change is quicker than ever, ever before. And so the old rules that we, sh that we could rely on and we could um, navigate around have gone out the window, lots of those have. Uh, the new rules remain to be written. And so we're trying to work out how we get through this, um, through this new landscape because a lot of the changes are driven by consumer behavior. And so it's out of the hands of the media owners, the advertisers, and the agencies themselves. We have to try and work out how to fit around what consumers do. And so we need new ways of understanding this market. Because it's, that in itself is an uphill, it's a huge uphill task. Um, pretty much all advertisers are finding it harder and harder to make their budgets work as effectively as they did even a couple of years ago. If we just take linear TV, inflation has been running through that market for several months and it's decimated budgets in terms of what they can deliver. And just if we look at the consumer behavior side of things, 80% of all impacts on commercial linear TV are now delivered against adults aged over 45. Uh, looking at me and Simon, obviously that's not a bad thing, but some advertisers want to reach younger people as well. Um, and budgets can't keep pace with inflation, so it means that Campaigns are characterized by lower weights, lower reach, and slower reach as well. So advertisers like Simon can no longer get the same level of exposure for a campaign in the run-up to a key sales weekend from a single medium that they used to. So they need to replace the lost impressions, which we can do easily, but we need to replace them effectively, and that's where the difficulty lies. So what we need, thank you, Simon, what we need is a denominator that we can apply across online and offline that can take account of all the different cost metrics that you see at the top there. Some of those are comparable across media, some of those not at all. We can slice and dice digital impressions however we want to, but we don't know what constitutes quality, we don't know what good looks like with a lot of this sort of stuff, because we know that not all impressions are equal. And where attention comes in, it gives us a view on the cost of media, it gives us a view on the quality of media, it gives us a path towards the effectiveness and what lies behind the effectiveness of different channels, and most importantly, it gives us insight into the consumer behavior. So the point when your campaign is in the wild, where you can't do much about it, and where people are seeing it, you understand how much attention they're paying to advertising, what messages they're taking out of it, and it can then inform creative strategy. So we see attention as a, as a hugely important denominator to go through from cost, through, through, through quality, through creative, through cross-channel reach, and through into brand health and effectiveness as well. Now, the next slide, which I'll, I'll pop up in a second. Oh, there he's, he's blowing, he's blowing with the numbers. Oh, there we go, there we go. Okay, well, everyone forget. So, um, so what we did um, with Mike and his team at Lumen was we looked at the attentive CPM for one of our large retail clients. So this is the cost of buying a 1,000 seconds of attention across online and offline. And then we then compare those numbers against the ROI efficiency that we see from our entire analytics database using retail clients. And the numbers that you'll see linking ACPM with ROI are quite compelling. Now, Simon. Thank you very much. So the R squared on these numbers is 0.98. For anyone who understands R squareds better than I do, the closer to one you get, the better the correlation. But for this example, where we've taken actual ACPM data and actual media uplift ROI data, it is almost a perfect correlation. Now, we need to look at other audiences, we need to look at other sectors, but it's a hugely important indicator that attention is a key determinant in understanding effectiveness in the modern landscape. Simon. Back to me then. Okay, so let's talk about some of the challenges uh, that 
particularly at dreams that we've faced. I suppose the first piece is really complexity. When I first started in media advertising, it was very simple, throw out a TV ad, throw out a, a radio ad, bit of press, and that was it. And now the world is so complex that we operate in. And the challenges that we face are that every channel you go in grabs the, uh, or claims the prize of attribution differently. In addition to that, you've got brand and promo. And if we follow the traditional rules, we know that brand and promo work simultaneously together. So how as an advertiser, marketer, how are you supposed to navigate through all of this sort of complexity? And digital presents huge opportunities. You know, we can reach those very niche audiences, but we can also reach broad audiences. We have multiple opportunities around creativity. Um, we, can, we can stand it up really quickly, and it can also be very cost efficient to get into digital marketing. But let's not forget that digital um, carries its own challenges. What about transparency? All of those walled gardens around every channel and linking everything together. You have to look at everything in silos, and that's a particular challenge for an advertiser. Is the targeting accurate? And Martin and I are talking about different challenges, and in some cases, there's examples where, you know, target markets have been identified, but actually delivery against those can be as low as 30%, but yet as an advertiser, you're paying for those. And then, is it being seen? You know, the, the, the channel owners report that it's 80% seen, but that's only like one or two seconds, half an ad. Um, what really is happening in that, Martin? So the, the cartoon on the right-hand side is what Simon's going to come and talk about in a, in a few slides' time in a bit more detail. It's about understanding, using attention, which ads are most impactful, looking beyond viewability, but looking actually eyes on attention. And so what... What we've learned over the last few years when we've been working closer and closer with Mike is that just, becomes, just because something is attractive at a, at a cost or a CPT or a CPM basis, actually what it might do is it might drive your business in the wrong direction. Sometimes there are opportunities uh, to look at more expensive media. So back to dreams. Um, I'm a perfectionist, so our journey to perfection has been quite uh, difficult. There's been many hurdles that we've had to cross along the way. One of those uh, uh, clear things is we need a channel strategy. We're a multi-channel business, online, offline, we're over 200 stores. We needed to address performance and we needed to look at ROI. So from a promotional campaign, how do we measure ROI? And then on the flip side, we know that brand is equally important, but how do we know what an efficient brand campaign looks like? We can't measure the ROI immediate within that, so we need a different approach. And that's where attention came in for us. So, running on to attention, just a few thought starters. It's not just about cheap eyeballs. It's not about buying things at the cheapest possible price. You know, quality often wins over quantity. Get the right quality message out there in the right channel and you, your results can be significantly different. And also, focus more on creativity. You can spend hours, weeks, days, months trying to figure out the targeting, but that only adds a tiny incremental part. Get the creative right first off. And what's seen isn't this, or what's been, what's been viewed isn't the same as what's actually been seen. Everyone reports things differently. This is why we've been working with Lumin, um, and Mike will be talking more later on today about their methodology in order to uh, determine these test results. So, first sort of example here. This is, this is, this is a well-known ad. But the example I'm going to show here is an example of an actual average, average view time we saw in um, running our tests. So let me play this. There you go. That ad, I'm sure, changed everyone's opinions of that brand, and you know what the brand is, and you know what it was selling. So my question back to you guys was, as an advertiser, does that represent value? Has that changed the opinions of the nation? I defy anyone to say that, just over a second, and that's what would be delivered in as many social channels, can have uh, an impact. And it's important to remember that, that when you choose your channels, it is back to that quality uh, message. So this graph here just shows you that not all channels behave the same when it comes to um, viewability. And what we see here is the orange is uh, BVOD. And what you see is BVOD has very high attention and second views further up the funnel. But what you then get is TV actually keeps the attention much longer, which is that long blue line. So it has a much flatter peak, but it keeps people long. And what you also get is when you're running a 30-second ad, 
not everyone's watching the ad from start to finish at 100%. People dive in and dive out, and it's, it's really like a curve like that. So it's very important, creativity-wise, to pay attention to what that makeup is. Um, you've got to have um, a lot more bits that go into it. So, yeah, so I'm running forward at pace. We've only got a few minutes. So very quickly, when you break down all your CPMs, that's the shape that you get. BVOD, no surprise, is the most expensive and social is the most cheapest. But when you look at viewability across that, the picture's very different. The top lot uh, have very long viewability, TV, BVOD. Social, <clears throat> only over a second. And then when you switch that to attentive CPMs, the picture changes once more. So the most cost efficient would be TV down the bottom. Social actually works out the most expensive on uh, uh, seconds viewed. So actually you've seen a complete reverse from what we showed you there. The situation's completely reversed. And actually you need to focus more on the big screen, it gives you much more attention as well rather than the small screen. So very quickly, looking at um, YouTube and our YouTube example, we have YouTube had many, many platforms, many, many uh, ways of showing creative. So the test is quite hard to run through in this. So what we did is we first looked at um, creative. So we used two partners within this, System One and NeuroInsight, to look at our creative and make sure that our creative was best in class. Then we ran a geo test. We split the country into multiple geolocations. We used Lumin to look at um, the attention, and we used Ubiquiti to look at the ROI performance of that test. And basically, what you see here on the left, we used 20 seconds skippable in this example and six second bumpers, non-skippable. No surprise, 20 seconds are more expensive at CPM. But when you look at attentive CPM, 20 seconds are far more cheaper than the six seconds. So what the shape of attention looks slightly different. The important part is that in the first five seconds, the 20 second skippable are viewed higher than the six second bumpers. And then at halfway through the ad, you've still got over 50% of the ad is still watched and 40% of the ad is viewed right to the end on the 20 second skippable. So what does that mean on an ROI basis? When we looked at ROI, three and a half, half times greater is the 20 second um, versus the six second non-skippable. So actually, what appeared to be cheaper at the start actually is less efficient at drive and return and are less efficient at attentive CPMs. So in summary, as I said, it's not just about cheap eyeballs. The media landscape is constantly changing and you need to evolve with that. Quality is the category, uh, the catalyst for success and attention is the domination of performance. And that's it. Thank you very much.